Hey, man, that's a good worship, huh, Leonard? Hey, man, that thing ministered to me. Hey, man, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, man, pray the Lord. You know, you know, I was thinking that when I was worshiping next to my wife, I wanted to whisper and say, I love that worship right there. And he just confirmed that thing. Hey, man, he just confirmed. Yo, I ain't want to bother, but I wanted to say, I love it, that worship right there. And Leonard just spoke that thing out. Give it up for Leonard. <laughs> that was a pure spirit. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter number three, family. Ecclesiastes, in fact, you don't have to go to it. Go to Romans chapter number five. It's already on the screen. How many of y'all love the word? How many of y'all know the word is precious? How many know the word will take you over? How many know the word will produce anything you believe in God for? How many of y'all love the word? I say it all the time. When I'm reading the word and I'm studying the word or I'm listening to the word, I say to myself, I love the word. And I told y'all in my spirit, I heard the word say, I love you back. No, that's true. It said, I love you back. How many of y'all in love with the word? It'll produce family. Somebody come here for a word. Who is that somebody? Who am I? Somebody come in for a word. How many of y'all came to see what my wife had on the day? How many? How many of y'all wanted to see what Pastor Terry? How many of y'all come for a word? Mm -hmm. I, <clears throat> I got the right group then. Amen. Listen for your word. Listen for your word. Streaming live. Listen for your word. One word. Somebody say one word. One word. One, let me tell you something, family. Let me tell you something. Watch this up. The Christian, the reason I believe the way I believe, God gave me a word. Fresh start, new beginning. See, that's what changed uh, the prophet life, Andy. The Bible said when God first spoke to Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 3, Carol, the Bible said he kept running to Eli, the priest. Eli you know, kept saying, man, why are you waking me up? I'm old. Don't be wake. How many of y'all know you wake me up? I can't go back to sleep. Like my wife wake me up, I had to pray in the spirit to go back to sleep. Sometimes I snore, you know what I mean? I said, leave me alone. But watch this here. Finally, the Bible said he had never heard a word from God. He, had, he didn't know God personally for himself. So when you spend time with God, God going to whisper something personally to you, and that's going to change your life. See, you got to spend time with God. When you spend time with him, that's intimacy. And when you get intimate with him, he reveals secrets to you. Are you with me? And it's a game changer. It's going to separate you from everybody else on the face of the earth. Nobody who don't spend time with the word is powerful. How are you going to be powerful? The word is what's powerful. The spirit speaking by the word. Are you with me, family? Fall in love with the, with the word. Are you with me? And when you fall in love with the word, you're falling in love with Jesus. All right? All right, all right. Let's do our smile next side. Turn to the person to your left, to your right. Show them your 32s, your 22s, your 12s, your 2s, whatever you have left to work with. Everybody in the house ought to be smiling. Amen. Amen. If they ain't smiling, that's your name. What's wrong with you? Hey, well, let's hold that. Let's raise our Bibles up. Let's do our confession. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. Come on, say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I, am I am what it says I am. What it says I, am. I can do. What it, what it says I can do, I can have. I can have. What, it I can have. what it says I can have, I am a believer, am a believer. and not a, not a doubter. I am a doer, am a doer. not just a hero. I, I believe the word from Genesis, from Genesis through, through Revelation. Revelation. So let God be true, so and every man, every man. A, woman, a woman, a liar, a liar. in Jesus' name. So on the board here, our foundation scripture is, is, is Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. Because we're talking about the seasons of life. He says to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. Get that in your spirit. To everything. Somebody say everything. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose. Go to my, uh, uh, my objective. <coughs> we, might, we say my objective, my objective is to inform you that the seasons of your life are from God. To inform you that the season of your life from God, they're ordained by God for his purpose. And watch this here, family. I told you to get this in your spirit. Nothing just happens. Nothing just what? 
nothing just happened. Get that. See, God is, God is, everything happened by providence. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by God. When you got born again, God has ordained some things for your life. It's going to take place when the right season and the right time come. See, not, get that in your spirit. Nothing just what? Happened. Nothing just happened. And then we said types of season. We said that there are different types of season. There's off season, there's in season, and then there's out of season. Go to my wisdom for season. Go to my wisdom for season. And we said there is a beginning and the wisdom of season. Go to the first one, number one. Go to uh, uh, there's a beginning day and an ending day for everything. It is not our job to change the season. That's God's job. Our job is to recognize when the seasons are what, family? Changing. Number three, there's nothing we can do about seasons. We can't shorten them or make them longer. Number four, we said that, we said number four, that God has ordained certain seasons for our lives. And number six, just don't go through season, grow through them. Do what, family? Grow through them. And then last week, go to Romans chapter number 10, family. We start talking about the four phases of growth or the four season, the four seasons of growth. And we use Joseph and, and, and Joseph in the law of process. We use him as our model for talking about season. Now, now watch this here, family. We talked about Joseph being a young man, 17 years old. God gave him a dream. See, God gave him a dream. Like Dr. King, God gave Dr. King a dream. Same thing, God gave Joseph a dream. And Joseph, like you and me, had to go through these four phases or four seasons of growth. See, number one, we talked about, I don't know what I don't know. We said all of us start off at that phase. You just don't know. See, it's going to take some time for you to be seasoned. And see, when I look at this right here, Romans chapter number five, Romans chapter number five, look at verse number one. If you're there, say amen. It said, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope in the glory of God. Look at verse 3, 4, and 5. And not only that, we also glory in what, family? We glory in what? Remember that. Knowing that tribulation produces something, it produces what, family? Perseverance. Tribulation produces what? And perseverance produces what? Everybody look at me. The King James said, I like that translation. It said it produces not only character, it produces experience. When you go through something, it produces experience. Because when you go on a job interview, like she go on a job interview, the first part they will ask her, how much experience you got? Amen. They want to know. See, that's why the Bible said don't put up a novice in ministry. Why? Because they might get arrogant. You got to have some experience. So when we look at this right here. He said perseverance produces character or experience, and character or experience, hope. Somebody say hope. <clears throat> In verse 5, now hope does not what, family? Disappoint. Now, now watch this here, family. I want you to see something. See, the four phases, all of us, the four seasons that we got to go through, I don't know what I don't know. And then the second one is I know what I don't know. And we say the second one, it takes a life-changing experience for you to know that you don't know. Like Joseph, his father, he was his father's uh, uh, favorite son. He gave him a coat of many colors. Watch this here. And the Bible says his brothers hated him because he was his father's favorite. See, when people start liking you, people start hating on you. Let me tell you something, family. Anybody got the favor of God on their life, then expect haters. When you're favored by God, it's going to create Watch this here. Favor with men, and somebody going to hate you. That's why we as preachers say, can you stand to be blessed? Because a lot of folks can't stand to be blessed. Why? Because the Bible said, with the blessing going to come persecution. And a lot of y'all don't want to be talked about. A lot, of, a lot of people don't want folks saying nothing about them. They're going to talk about you anyway. You might well talk about me while I'm living right. See, so the Bible said the brothers hate him, but that ain't good enough. All of a sudden, you go to sleep and wake up. God didn't gave him a dream. And he tell those jokers about it. And the Bible said they already hate him. Now they hate him even more. 
Then the Bible says he goes back to sleep the next night, and God gives him another. Somebody say another. Another dream. Now he saw his father and his mother and his brothers bound down to him. And the Bible says he went and told them because he didn't know. He didn't know. And then all of a sudden the Bible says his father rebuked him. And his brothers hated him even more than that. And then one day, the Bible says brothers saw him coming, and they conspired together to kill him. See, but when you got a prophetic word of your life, can't nobody kill you. See, can't nobody, how you going to kill the word? And all of a sudden, the Bible said it took that life-changing experience. When they put him in that pit, like we read in, in Luke chapter 15, it took the, the Bible said when, when no one would give the prodigal son anything, he came to himself. How many of y'all have been to a place when nobody gave you anything, you was on your knee, you came to yourself? See, I tell my kids all the time, kids have to go through certain things. It's certain things you can't stop your kids from going through. You went through them, they need to go through them. Why? God don't have grandkids. God only have children. He don't have, he don't have grandchildren. He only have children. So some things, your kids, they must go through. See, so Joseph, now he's in a pit, and all of a sudden they sold him off to the Ishmael's life. He on his way to Egypt now. Why? Because the Bible, watch this here, family. And then the Bible said, now he know what he don't know because he was arrogant at first. Let me tell you something, how you humble, humble an arrogant person. Let him go through something. Let him go through. It'll bring you to your knee. I'm a living example of that. It'll bring you to your knees. See, they can put you in a place. It'll make a grown man cry. Are y'all with me? Now, family, we, we talked about that. Go to Romans chapter number 10. <clears throat> Romans chapter number what? Go to Romans chapter number 10. We talked about I don't know what I don't know. See, everyone start off at, at that state. And we talked about in Romans chapter 10, verse 14, right quick. It says, how then should they call on, how then should they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how should they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how should they hear without a preacher? We see everybody start on that state. Then the next state is, I don't know what I don't know. And then the next day, go to chapter number 41, Genesis 41. Let's talk about number three. We, we did one and two. Now we're going to pick up on number three. I know and grow and it starts to show. Let's talk about that right now. I know and grow and it starts to what, family? Now, watch this here. I'm going to make a statement because I want everybody to catch this here. I know and grow and it starts to show. Let me tell you something, family. Preparation is never lost time. How many of y'all heard what I just said? Preparation is never lost lost time. I know, see, we, a lot of us, this is how the kingdom operates. How? Seed, time, harvest. A lot of us want to go from seed, harvest. Uh-uh. We want to skip that. The Bible says, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. A man give a woman a seed, nine months later, here come the baby. Everything in the natural. If you plant a watermelon of seed in the ground, within a, whatever month it is, here come a watermelon. Must be being close to getting close to watermelon of seed. Must be getting close to wall of middle Watch this here, family. That's how the kingdom operates. By seed, time, heart. But today, we teach this generation wrong. We teach it. We sow today. By tomorrow evening, God going to bless you. Baby, you got it wrong. It's called seed, time, heart. And according to what you believe in God for, how long it's going to take even longer. See, so now we on number four. We on I know and grow. And it starts to show. But it takes a life, it takes a life uh, 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 chain of experience to make you change. See, it takes life chain of experience to make you change. Now Joseph is at a different place. Now watch this here, family. Everybody look at me. Joseph got a word over his life. Joseph got a word over his life. God said, your family going to bow down to you. See, a lot of us got a word like David over our life, and we think, because we, we gonna, God told us we're going to be the next king, Saul is going to come and give us the crown. Uh, you're going to have to go through something to get the crown. You're going to have to go through a cross. So Joseph got a word of his life. Watch this here. He got a word of his life. And all of a sudden, he's in a pit. All of a sudden, he's in Potiphar's house. And all of a sudden, Miss Potiphar betrays him. 
And all of a sudden, now he's in prison. Now he's in prison for no reason. Number one, he ain't got no bed in Egypt. He's thinking. Number two, he ain't got no bed to being in prison. Why, God? I got a word on my life. Why am I struggling? God, I got a word on my life. Why all this hell breaking loose in my life? See, why? Because God is teaching. He's preparing you for something. See, that's, 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 that's three things you can only get. Watch this here, family, when you go through something. The three things are, watch this here, experience, wisdom, and humility. What I just say, three things you can only get when you go through something. Experience, wisdom, and humility is gained only through time. So now he's in prison. Now he's on number three. I know and grow, and it starts to show. Are you in Genesis 41? Now look at me, family. Watch this here. But before Genesis 41, in Genesis chapter number 40, Pharaoh put two of his, his men in jail, two of his servants in jail. He put the butler and the baker in jail. And the Bible said they put him in, in Joseph's care. And then one day Joseph wake up, and they had this, this strange look on their face. And the Bible said Joseph went to them and said, what's the problem? What's going on? And they said to him, they said, we had a dream. And they said, Joseph said, doesn't interpretation belongs to God? See, <clears throat> when you're growing through something, see, see, I know and grow and it starts to show. The Bible says Joseph interpret their dream. Now, we're going to pick up in 41.9. If you're in Genesis chapter number 41, verse number 9, if you're there, say amen. Come on, everybody in Genesis 41.9. You ready? Look what it said. Then the chief... Butler spoke to Pharaoh saying, I remember my fault this day. What fault? Everybody look at me. When Joseph interpreted his dream, he told him, said, don't forget me. How many times you helped somebody and you told them, don't forget me? And how many times they forget you? How many of y'all grew up and we used to say, man, forget you then? <laughs> you don't have to say that. Folk going to forget you anyway. Watch this here, family. So he forgot about Joseph. Now, watch this here. At the end of, uh, of 44, it said, yet the chief brother did not remember Joseph, but he forgot him. And then in verse 41, verse 1, it said, then it came to pass at the end of two for a year. Now I'm in 49. Then the chief, I'm in verse 9. I'm in 41, 9, Genesis 41, 9. Then the chief brother spoke to Pharaoh saying, I remember my fault. When Pharaoh was angry with his servant, you put us in custody in the house of the captain, of the guard. Both me and the chief butler, we each had a dream one night. He and I, each of us dreamed according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now, there was a young Hebrew man with us there, a servant of the captain, of the God. And we told him, and he interprets our dream for us. To each man, he interprets according to his own dream. And it came to pass, just as he interpreted for us, so it what, family? Happened. He, re you, what's it? he restored me to my office, and he hanged him. Then Pharaoh said, sin, call Joseph. Then they brought him out quickly, out of the dungeon. He shaved, he changed his clothes, and he came to what? Everybody look at me. Look at number three. I know and grow, and it starts to show. When it's your time, God going to bring you out quickly. How many of y'all heard what I just said? When it's your, let me tell you something, family. God is a suddenly God. When if, if you're training, watch this here. If you're growing through the process, and you know the process is preparation and training, when that time comes, God going to bring you out quickly. Somebody say quickly. Somebody say suddenly. Are you with me? It ain't going to be no gradually. See, when you're ready, I heard somebody say years ago, said when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Are y'all with me? Now watch this here, family. Watch this here. Verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him out what? That's a word for somebody. Out of the dungeon. He shaved, changed his clothes, and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there's no one who can interpret it. But I heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, it is not in me. God would give Pharaoh an answer of what family? A peace. So Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream, right? Okay, now drop over. Watch this, verse 37. Come on, go to verse 37. Come on, come on, come on. Go to verse 37. 
See, now, see, I don't know what I know. Now I know what I don't know. Now I know and grow, and it starts to show. See, now watch this here. Verse 37. So Joseph interprets his dreams, so the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all of his what? And Pharaoh said to his servant, can we find such a one as this man in whom is the spirit of what? Whom is the spirit of what? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there's no one as discerning in what family? As you. Now everybody look at me. It took 13 years for Pharaoh to say that. Now you got to look, Joseph at 17 years old, he has a dream. <clears throat> now, 13 years later, he's 30. But watch this here. Joseph started out in phase one. I don't know what I know. Everybody go through that phase. You don't come here knowing. And then it take a life changing experience for you to know. I heard a guy say years ago, years ago, this guy, I was reading this book. He said, man, he said, for 20 years, Zunker, I used to call my daddy stupid, ignorant. He don't know what he's talking about. See, and all of a sudden, he said, when I became 20, I looked back and said, Lord, he's the smartest man I ever met in my life. Your kids going to look. How many of y'all quoting your parents today? Said, my mama told me. But growing up, you thought they didn't know what they was talking about. He said, when I got in my, he said, the older I got, the wise I said, my dad is a genius. I bet, I bet they're going to be a genius one day when you start going through yourself. Now, watch this here, family. 13 years later. Because he grew through the process. Now, look what God getting ready to do. But you know what most of us do? We just come to church. We ain't doing nothing. We See, God has ordained certain seasons for your life. What if Joseph would have messed them seasons up? Pharaoh said, we ain't met nobody as wise as you. But watch this here. Because he didn't been through 13 years of seasons. But remember what I told you? A lot of us, we go to our boss and we said, it's time for me to get a raise. Why? I've been on this job 20 years. I'm on the boss. Uh uh, you ain't got, you just been on the job 20 years. Watch this. You don't have 20 years' experience. You just got one year of experience for 20 years. <laughs> How many of y'all heard what I just said? Amen. You know why, family? Your gift gonna make room for you and bring you before. See, a lot of y'all think you got 20 years. You just got one year experience of something you've been doing 20 years. Why? When you're growing through season, it's going to make room for you and bring you before great men. See, the, <coughs> the Bible says your seed, which is the word of God, going to speak to your enemy one day. But most of us, we ain't growing through our season. we just going through seasons. Now, look at what Pharaoh told him. Pharaoh said to him, come on, look at verse 38. And Pharaoh said to serve, can we find such as one as this a man in whom is the spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there's no one as discerning and wise as you. You should be over my house. All my people should be ruled according to your word. Only regard to the throne would I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, see, somebody say see. I have set you over the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took out his signet ring off his hand, put it on Joseph's hand. And he clothed them in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. I always say two chain. Put a two chain around his neck. Watch this. And because it's the Grammys tonight. Okay, no, someone come. Everybody stay with me. Watch this. Watch this. And he put a rope. Well, he, he put him and he had him ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried out before him and bowed the knee. So he set him over the what family? He set him over. All the land of what? And Pharaoh also said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without your consent, no man may lift his hand or foot in the land of what, family? In the land of what? Go to chapter 45. Watch this here, family. Uh-huh. Now you know, and it start to grow. See, a lot of church people, we say stuff week in and week out, day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month. I'm the blessed. I'm blessed. And not, I'm, the, I'm the head of not the tail. I'm blessed going in the cup. We've been saying it for years. It's okay to say it. But family, faith without works is dead. At some time you're like, God be taking you from faith to faith and glory to glory. It ought to be some evidence. Somebody say evidence. You ought to have 
evidence that you are moving forward. What's your evidence? How many of y'all know some folk been in church for 50 years and broke as patches? How many of y'all remember patches? That's old school right there. Uh-uh, family. The Bible said God should be increasing us and more and more and more. We still struggling. Something is wrong. See, something is wrong. Why? Yeah, you, you start off, you don't know. Then you know what you don't know. And when you don't know what you don't know, this is what you're going to do. You find somebody who do know and you follow him. Oh, what Paul said, follow me, according to 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 1. Follow me as I follow Christ. Are you with me? And then Paul says something there. Where I have you at, family? Genesis 45. Go to Philippians chapter number 4, verse 9. Get back to Genesis. Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 9. Oh, you find somebody who know and you, and you emulate them. See, you don't copy their personality, but if you imitate the principles, you get the same result. Ain't nothing in the world to, to see somebody trying to act like somebody, you know what I'm saying, that they're not. You're trying to take on somebody else's personality. But look what Paul said in Philippians 4, 9. Philippians chapter 4, verse 9, he said, These things which you learn, these things which you have what? Learned received and heard and saw in me. These do, and the God of peace going to do what, family? He said, if, if you do the thing that you learned, heard, saw, seen in me, if you do it, then God will be with you too. Go back to Genesis 45. Come on, family, watch this here. Now, watch this here. This is how I know when people are growing through the process. This, this is how I know when people are growing through the process and they're and they growing through that season. Now, it, are you in Genesis 45? Now, everybody look at me. This is how I know. Remember, you can tell a tree by the fruit that is there. You tell a tree. I can tell. How you know it's an apple tree? Apple's on the tree. How you know it's a lemon tree? I see lemons. Come on, family. Watch this here. This is how you tell whether or not people are growing through their season. Now, watch this here. Joseph Brothers... They stripped his coat off of him. They separated from him, from his daddy, for over 20-some years. They sent him to Egypt. Because of them, he's in Pharaoh's house. Now, Ms. Ms. Potiphar allowed him, he's in prison. He done went through all this hell for them. Now, think about this here, family. If somebody sold you off, put you in the pit, strip your clothes, rape you, send you to another country, you got to learn the language. Then eventually they portray you and you thrown in prison. This is how I know whether or not you've grown through the process. Joseph's going to tell us in, in verse 45. Y'all ready? Now watch this here. Watch this here, family. Watch this here. I'm in Genesis chapter 45. Watch this here, family. If you're there, <coughs> if you're there say amen. Look at, look at verse 5. Genesis 45, verse number 5. If you're there, are you there? But now, somebody say now. Now, watch this here. Now, watch this here, family. Joseph's brothers then came to him because there's a famine. They need food. But the Bible says he recognized them. He didn't, they didn't recognize him. So this is how I know whether or not you are growing through the season. Are you with me? How would you treat people who put you in a pit, who sold you off, who allowed you to go to prison, now they need help? How would you treat them today? That let me know whether or not you're growing. That lets you know whether or not you are ready. Come on right now, family. I hear some of y'all tell me, I wouldn't give them dog. I, see, I, know, I, hear, I see that bubble over your head. Uh-huh. And I, Because you ain't ready right now. Because look what Joseph said. Now they come and they need his help. But let me tell you something, family. When you grow, everybody look at me. When you're growing through the process, you grow Watch this here. And people don't know you didn't change. They still think you're the same person they met 15, 20 years ago. They know, see, they still got a grudge. They know that you got a reason to hate them, so they think you're going to hate them because that's what they would do. See, just like when I go back to my hometown, and they, they, they still, they don't think today, but for the most part, they, they still think I'm the same Terry Starks they met 20 some years ago. I'm born again, baptized with the Holy Spirit, called into the gospel. That's why Jesus said, leave your hometown. They ain't going to believe you. I'm going to send you somewhere else. Now, the Bible says they don't recognize him, but he recognized. See, I recognize people because I have grown. 
but they don't recognize me. Because a lot of people still think you're the same person you were they met 20 years ago. Can I get amen? amen. Now watch this here, family. Watch this here. This is how I know where you know. Verse 5. But look what Joseph said. But now, do not be grieved or angry with yourself because you sold me here. For God sent me. Who sent me? Before you to do what, family? To, now, everybody, he said, don't be grieved. Don't be angry with yourself. I'm, 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 uh, 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 uh. God, security, come here. Put all them jokers, put a loop around. See that? Come on. Cut all them toes off. But look what Joe said, uh-huh, don't be angry with yourself because you sold me here. See, look how, look how he's talking now. Why? Because he's growing through the season. See, look what he's saying. Look at, verse, look at verse 6. For these two years the famine has been in the land, and there are still five years in which there will be neither plow nor hub. Look at verse 7. And God sent me before you. Hold on, God. You, sent, you put me in that pit. You put me in that prison and let me sit there and let them folks forget about me? Yeah. Let me tell you something, family. We'd rather get mad at a person than mad at God. See, we would rather get mad at a person than get mad at God. But, see, when you see, the Bible says our steps are orchestrated by God. So we want to take it out on somebody than seeing God's hand on our life. So look what he's saying right here <coughs> in verse 7. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great what? Hold on, you want me to save the same folks who put me in a pit? Who tore my clothes off of me? Who sent me to a land I ain't know, know that language? Who had me put in prison? Now you want me to preserve them? Look at your name said, yep. Watch this here, family, watch this here. Verse 8, look what Joseph said. So now, it was not you who sent me here, but who? Hold on, God. Hold on, family. Who's sitting in there? Now, everybody look at me, family. God, you could have got me to each of a different kind of way. Come on, fam. You know why God allowed him to go through the pit? You know why God let him go through Potiphar's house? You know why God let Miss Potiphar betray him? You know why God let him go through the prison? Why? So he can run the country 13 years later. And if you don't go through what you go through, you're not going to have the experience. You're not going to have, watch this here, family. You're not going to have the experience. You're not going to have the wisdom. And you're not going to have the humility. You're not going to be humble. And remember, pride come before. I'm telling you today. Somebody say today. Everything, remember, nothing just happened. Everything you're going through is orchestrated by God. You hating on people for the wrong, it's training, baby. And you got to have revelation to get what I said. Look what Joseph said in verse 8. So now it was not you who sent me here, but who? See, why? Because they expecting Joseph to kill them. See, the people that did you wrong, they expecting you to kill them, to sue them. Uh, they don't know, baby, I'm in training. See, come on, go to verse chapter 50. Come on, let's pick it up. Come on. See, because now I know and grow and it starts to show. And then number four, I simply go because of what I know. See, not only did God use Joseph to save uh, uh, Ish, uh, uh, Abraham, uh, see, Joseph fed all the other countries in the world. Let me tell you something, family. What you're going through is bigger than what you see if you grow through the season. But some folks, watch this here, family. Watch this here. I'm going to make a statement. Everybody in chapter 50? Okay, everybody look up. Watch this. I'm going to make a statement. A woman of God told me years ago, Miss Libby Belcher, I'll never forget it, Miss Libby, her soul, she's sleeping the Lord right now. She told me years ago I was studying for a lesson. And she told me, we was talking, and I said, Miss Libby, one day they'll get it. She was old enough to look at me, but not in Satira. They don't have to get it. Now I'm looking at you in your face today and saying, you don't have to get it. See, it's, a lot of folks stay at, watch this here, at phase one all their lives. How many of y'all heard what I just said? They, James, stay at phase one all their lives, and they linda. They never get it. Now watch this here. See, my children, 
See, now I got a daughter in college. I got a son in high school. See, and I got a wife who likes nice things. They need for me to get it right now. See, your kids need for you to get it. See, the people, let me tell you something, family. If I don't make it, it's a lot of folks won't make it in this world. Why? Because God didn't put their deliverance in my hand. What you mean, deliverance in hand? But based on the wisdom and influence he had given me over people, they need for me to, to be make sure I'm on top of my game. Because if, watch this here, he said, if, if, if you don't make it, it's a lot of folks won't make it. What if Joseph never went, he stayed at phase one all his life? Israel would have starved. They'd have died. Abraham's seed would have died off. It's a lot of folk going to die if you don't make it. I know what I'm saying. It's some folks need for you to make it. Why? I see folks sitting in, in churches for years, don't get nothing. And God said, leave. I can't leave my mom and them. They've been here for 50 some years. We got a stone out there with our name on the Smith family. <laughs> we got the first three rows. They know this. Don't touch them row with the Smith. And the church is dying. And God trying to get you out of there to go somewhere so you can get all the Smiths out of there to save them. Come on, family. But we won't, we're going to stay right there and die. And God didn't put their answer in your spirit. It's a lot of folks, I'm telling you, stay at phase one all of their, I'm talking about 50, I'm talking about folks sitting here, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, never get it. And I, that scared me. Not that it scared me because I was getting it, because I was pastoring then. I said to myself, man, that's scary for an individual to never grow through the process. Your kids need for you to, to move, go from faith to faith and glory to glory. They, <clears throat> they need for you to go from one to four. That's just like, see, my wife, when she first learned how to drive, she learned how to drive a, a, a stick shift. See, she learned how to drive a stick shift. Most back then, she said, Terry, no, coach. she said, I learned how to drive, but I learned how to drive an automatic. So literally, you can put her in a stick shift, she can, she can drive that thing. What if you start driving on 85 and all you stayed in first gear? When you in first gear, second gear telling you to scream. Arr, arr, arr. Come on, family. Most of us, our lives are screaming what? Arr, arr. It's telling you, baby, go to second. Hit that clutch and go to second. It's telling you. And then second, scream. It's telling you to go to, and eventually to four. When you get to the fourth gear, that thing level off. But most of us, all of our life, and then watch here. We mad at other folks because they shipping. They shipping. We mad at other folks. See, I'm telling you, family, that's why God brought you here. They need for you to win, Faileen. See, because if you don't win, they not going to win. Why? Because God, remember, I, I said something. I know what I'm saying. I don't say stuff until I meditate out. I know we say, all of us say we're highly favored. Not all of us. God always favored a man. And those that connected to the man get the favor. See, God gave Abraham the favor. And Lot and everybody connected to Abraham got the favor. Then the next one was Isaac. See, everybody connected to Isaac got the favor. Then after Isaac come Jacob. After Jacob, everybody got the, after Jacob come Joseph. And everybody got the, after jo Joseph come Moses. And because of Moses on his life, God raised up one person. And if you got ears and eyes to see, you connect with them and that favor flow on you. See, instead of hate. See, and now when you get with the right person, then all of a sudden what's on them come on you. Because you connected to them. Then he raised up David. And the Bible. <clears throat> the Bible says David raised up everybody that went with him. Family, a lot of us never change gears. Now look at Genesis chapter number 50. Now Jacob is died, then died. And the brother said he kept us alive because a father. Now he's, our father's dead. He's going to kill us. See, a lot of folks think you're going to kill them because they would do what they thought, they think, they, they think you would do what they would do. They don't know you have grown. Family, it's some of y'all. Y'all siblings think y'all in the same place 
they were because y'all grew up in the same house. They don't know you are light years ahead from them. They don't know. And then, this is how I grew up. Watch this. This was funny to me. I grew up, and I didn't even know it till, my, till one of my siblings started saying it. They said, uh, Tara talk white. How do white talk? <laughs> and then this is what they said. Look, what, this is what they said, Victor. Then they said, uh, Tara act like he's been raised by white people. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Anybody else in here heard that before? I said to myself, I didn't do, I got broken English. Everything, but what? Watch this here, family. The hand of God was on my life. The hand of God is on your life. And when the hand of God is on your life, it's going to distinguish you from everybody. Why? You don't even know it until you look back and go, Lord, God's hand is on my life. See, family, let me, let me give you a good, good example. When God is walking with you, you don't see it right here. When, you, when God is walking with you, you don't see it right here. This is what you got to do. You got to look back and go, the Lord is on my life. <laughs> you, see, what he tell Moses, you got to look back to see my glory. Because, Joseph, when you going through the pit, Zunker, when you going through prison for all those years, you can't see the hand of God. You got to look back when, you're, when, when the Bible says, and it come to pass, you go, Lord. How many of y'all looking back saying, God, thank you. You can't see it in that present moment. You can't see it. You have to look back 20 years and go, God, thank you. I ain't married that joker. God, thank you I ain't take that job. God, thank you I ain't buy that house. God, thank you I ain't go to the club that night. They shot up everybody. You look back and see the hand of God. Now watch Joseph's brother. Watch the end of the story. See, this is how I know you're growing through the season. Your conversation tell me. Now look at the conversation. 45, verse number, let's pick it up in 45, verse number 15. If you're there, say amen. Can your conversation tell me what? When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, perhaps Joseph would hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did. So they sent a message to Joseph, saying, before your father died, he commanded, saying, thus you should say to Joseph, they lying. We already know that. We talked about that last week. I beg you, please, forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Uh-huh. Now please, if they were Jane, they please forgive the trespass of the servant of the God of your father. And Joseph, watch here, wept when, he, when they spoke to him. He did what? Why did he weep? Remember, see, let me, let me give y'all a revelation. You remember how when Jesus came and the Bible said, they said that Lazarus were dead, and the Bible said Jesus what? Wept. You know why he's wept? He wept because they didn't believe. They didn't have revelation. Joseph wept because he said, man, they still don't get it. You sitting beside folks, around folks who still don't get it. Well, I'm, everybody here getting it. The folk didn't come to church today to get it. <laughs> See, watch it. He's, he, the Bible said he well because they don't get it, Phalene. It's best they don't get it. They still don't get it. And when you talk to people, you know, you say, hmm, they don't get it. They don't get it. They don't get it. Watch what's here. And then the Bible said, look what, look what the scripture said. Watch this here. In, in Joseph, well, verse 18, then his brother also went and fell down before his face. And they said, behold, we are your what? See, that's the dream. Joseph, I saw y'all bowing down. Did you see some of us like that? Yeah, go, come on, bow down. Yeah, yeah, I told your tail you was going to bow down to me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, bow, bow down. Then I, t- Reuben, you better drop your head. Uh-huh, Simeon, you look up at me if you want to. See, that's what we do. We, we, that's like in football, you hit somebody, they stand on them and go, See, uh, uh-huh, you stand them, you stand them, go. Yeah, uh, uh-huh, family. See, why? Remember, I told you three things that you get. Over, over, over you get what you get. Experience, experience wisdom, and who. Yeah. See, when you get to a place of God, you humble now. If you still arrogant, God still got stuff. He got to push out your light, cause you still think it's about you, cause in your flesh dwells no good thing. The Bible says those in the flesh cannot please God. See, now watch Joseph. <coughs> watch Joseph. Verse 19, if you're there, say amen. Joseph said to them, do not be what, family? For, I, for am I in the place of who? For I'm in the place of who? But as for you, you meant evil against me, 
But God meant it for what? But God meant it for what? In order to bring about as it is this day to save many people what? To save many people what? Joseph, you got it wrong, bro. It ain't about you. Man, we just ran for it. God sent me through this process. Not just to say you. Remember, Joseph saved everybody in the region around them. He saved the Egyptian, all the other lands around there. Why? Because he grew through the, the phases of growth. He grew through the, the, the seasons of growth. But most of us stay at stage one. And we say, God, what's the problem? God's the problem is you're in stage one. See? And remember, stage one, my people perish. It's just a lack of knowledge. Remember, and remember I told you, family, you got to remember the stuff I told you. Watch this here, family. I told you, look what I told you, I told you that change is inevitable, but growth is intentional. How many of y'all heard what I just said? See, change is inevitable. Things going to change. Let me tell you something, baby. They already, this is an 8, this is an 18, Jay, what is this, an 8? They already, go, they will have 9s and 10s and 11s and 12s. I'm going to, the devil is alive, I'm going to stay with the 8. <laughs> now they got, you can show your face in the pop-up. Change is going to happen whether or not you get a boy. Uh, uh, it's going to happen whether you, you sign off on it or not. But change is inevitable, but growth is intentional. you got to be intentional to go from one to two to three and to four. And watch this here, friend. Watch this. Let me show you something. Where are we going, Holy Spirit? Go to Job chapter 32. I want you to see something. Job chapter what? 32. Go to Job chapter 32. Mm -hmm. See, change is inevitable, but growth is intentional. You got to be intentional about growing. That's why some folks in the same place, somebody say the same place. Same place. I remember, everybody said years ago. True story. True story, Rod. I went to prison for four years. Got out of prison. Some of my partners came to me on the day after and said, let's go who? Let's pick back up where we left off at. I talked so bad to the Negro. I mean, uh, I said to myself, God said, Terry, they still think you're the same person. See, because they the same person. Family, you're not the same. You're not the same. See, now watch this here. Job chapter number what? Job chapter number what? I want you to see this here. Go to Job 32. I want for you to see this here, family. Watch this here. Uh-huh, Job 32. Look at verse number 7. Some folks never grow. They never go from faith to faith to glory to glory. They, they stay in phase one all their life. Now watch this here. <clears throat> in Job 32, verse number 7, let's start at verse number 6. In Elihu, the son of Bashel, of Buzzai, answered and said, I am, I am young in years, and you are very old. Therefore, I was afraid. No, I was afraid to speak and dared not declare my own opinion to you. And I said that age should speak and multitudes of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in a man. But there is a what in a man? In the breath of life, in, in the breath of the almighty God gives him understanding. Great men are not always wise, nor do age always understand what, family? Now, you got to hear what the message Bible is saying about this. Listen to what the message Bible said. Y'all ready? Look what it said. He said, y'all look, everybody look at me. Listen to what this message said. He said, I'm a young man. And you are old in experience. You old and should have experience. That's what he should have said. But look what he said. Look what he said. He said, that's why I kept quiet and held back from joining the discussion. I kept thinking, look, he said, kept thinking, this young man, he said, I kept thinking, experience would tell. The longer you live, the wiser you become. Look what he said. He said, but I see I was wrong. <laughs> Ain't nothing worse than an old fool. He said, but I see I was wrong. It's God's spirit in a person, the breath of the almighty one, that makes wise human insight possible. The, look what he said. He said, the experts have no corner on wisdom. Watch this here. Look, look what it said right here. Look what it said. What it said. He said, what is it? Getting old does not guarantee good sense. 
some folks stay at phase one all of their Don't let that be you. If you don't make it, it's some folks won't make it. See, he said right here, getting old doesn't guarantee good sin. So he said, I decided to speak up. Now you listen. See, because you think you go to an older person. See, I remember years ago, Linda remember this here. I had this, this, this lady to come in. I'm going to make sure I protect everybody. She came in, and I wanted to involve her in some of the things that we was doing for her family. But when she came in and she started speaking, I knew then she wasn't going to be a part of the team. I said to myself, my God, you are ignorant. And that, watch this, family. True story, true story, true story. We're talking about millions of dollars. She never had another conversation with me about anything. I said to myself, you're an old fool. You are who I just read about. I'm talking about folk who go to church. Because you go to church don't mean nothing. It just means you go to church. See, that's different between church and relationship. Hebrews chapter number five. Come on, I got four minutes. Stay with me. Four minutes, we out of here. Come on, family. Some folks never discover the law of process and remain, I told you, in phase one, their entire lives. Hebrews chapter what? We got two scriptures, we're done. Let's Hebrew, we're going to read Hebrews chapter five, then we're going to go to 2 Samuel, not 2 Samuel, 2 Kings. We're going to go to 2 Kings chapter number two, and we're done. Where are we going, family? Hebrews chapter number five, right quick. Uh-uh, you're supposed to grow through this here. You, you, everybody starts with, I don't know what I don't know. All kids come here, though. Then you find out, I know what I don't know, because you, you, God, a life changing experience. Then I know and grow, and it starts to show. And then number four, I simply go because of what I know. Like, I ain't guessing right now. I know what to do right now. I've been walking with God long enough to know. He ain't showed me everything, but he showed me enough. You said, Pastor, what should I do? Walk in what he already showed you. That's what you should do. Look at here. In Hebrews chapter number 5, verse 12, if you're there, say amen. He said, for though by this time you ought to be what? You ought to be what? But you need someone to teach you again. The first principle of the oracles of God and have come to need of milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness for his baby. Verse 14. But solid food belongs to those who are full age, those who are mature. That is, those who by reason of use, or the, by, one train they said by practice, have their senses exercised, watch this, to discern between good and Last scripture, we're done. Second Kings chapter number what? Two. Second Kings, last scripture, and we finished, family, for the day. Second Kings chapter number two. Mm -hmm, go there, and we're done. 2 Kings chapter number 2. And we're done. Last scripture. Somebody say for real. 2 Kings chapter number 2. Now everybody look at me when you get it. Remember, now I simply go because of what I know. Remember, when, when, remember I told you when the teacher, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. I, I, I say a quote all the time, and I want for you to catch this quote. I say it all the time. It says, when a man's heart is right toward God, when a man or woman's heart is right toward God, God is obligated to bring them into the knowledge or the people they need to meet that is critical for their success. How many of y'all heard what I just said? I'm going to say it one more time. When a man's heart is right toward God, if your heart is right toward God, God is obligated to bring you into the knowledge, books, whatever it may be, the Bible, whatever it is, into the knowledge or the people you need to meet that is critical for your success. Now we're talking about Elisha, Elijah and Elijah. So now Elijah is plowing behind 12 oxen. And all of a sudden, Elijah, Elijah shows up and throws his mantle on Elisha. Elisha, remember last week we talked about it, he cut the oxen up and made ox tail, and then he started following yeah, he made oxtails. Amen. That's where oxtails come from, right there, in the Bible. <laughs> I just told somebody what they're going to eat today. Watch this, watch this here, family. 
And we talked about it. Everybody can't make oxtail. Watch this. And then he started following him. And then years later, somebody said years later, we're going to see that he go from one to four. See, when your heart is right toward God, God is obligated to bring you into the knowledge of the people you, of the knowledge that you need to know, of the people you need to meet that is critical for your success. But when he bring them across your path, you better drop everything and follow them. So Elijah, he, 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 so he said, Mom and Daddy, I know y'all think y'all going to turn this farm over to me. I'm out of here. He left and followed the man of God. Now he's been following him for a year. Now we're going to pick it up in verse number one. If you're there, say amen. Now watch this, family. Come on, come on. We got a little reading, but this is it. We're done. And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah went with Elijah from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elijah said, as the Lord live, the devil is alive. As your soul live, I would not leave you. So they went down to what? He tried to separate himself. But Elijah said, you ain't separating from me. Y'all remember who was that? Naomi and, and Ruth. Ruth said, your people going to be, your God going to be, where you live, I'm going to. Where you stay, I'm going. Your people are going to be. See, watch this here, family. Watch this here. Verse number three. Now the sons of the prophet who were at Bethel came out to Elijah and said, Do you know that the Lord would take away your master from you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Shut up. And Elijah said to him, Watch it. And Elijah said to him, Elijah, stay here, please. For the Lord had, watch it, sent me on to Jericho. But he said, The Lord live. And the devil is a liar, as your soul lives, I would not leave you. So they came to what, family? So now the son of the prophet, and he go again. People are always whispering in your ear. <clears throat> the son of the prophet who were in Jericho came to Elijah and said to him, do you know the Lord would take away your master from you today? He said, I know, man, shut up. Why? How he know, family? He'd been through the process. You know, you just sit there. He'd been through the process. And folk come and say, do you know this? Mm, I know. That's why God sent him by, so I can hang out with him. I've been hanging out with a major prophet. Watch this here, family. Verse 6, Elijah said to him, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to joy. But he said, the Lord live, and that's your soul live, and the devil's a lie. I would not leave you. So the two of them went on. And the 50, 50 men, the sons of the prophet, went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the what? Now, everybody look at me, family. Everybody look at me. Stream of light. Look at me. Watch this here. Come here, Bernard. Come here, Bernard. I'm Elisha. Elijah, and you Elisha. But Bernard is going to learn from me. This is how God going to teach you, family. He going to teach you one-on-one. -on -one. He ain't going to teach. Remember, he had the 50 prophet. He next, because God got him hanging out with the man of God. Everywhere the man of God going, he's going with me. Everywhere I go, if I try to leave, but not stay here, I'll be back. Oh, see that look? See it? Everywhere I go, okay, oh, hey, come on in. I can't leave you. You might well go with me. You know, but no, I'll be right back. Stay right here until I get back. You see what he's doing? See, the other 50 is doing this here. Come on, but not. they doing this here. they watch it. But he's walking with the prophet. Why? That's going to be a transfer. I'm telling you, family, God going to teach you one-on-one. -on -one. Like when I'm giving you uh, 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 in the church today, the mass church today, you got to go home and spend time with him yourself. And the Bible said, what he tell you in the dark, he's going to have you speak in the light. See, this ain't intimate right here. See, intimate is when you get along with God. Are you with me? See, he don't teach you with the 50. He teach you, he teach one-on-one. -on -one. How many of y'all got what I just said? Come on, but now, thank you. You can go now for real. Come on, family. Watch this here. Come on, let's finish. Come on, come on. Watch this here. Uh, verse 7. The fifth of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the joy. See, a lot of folks watching from a distance. It's a lot of folks right there in the camp. Verse 8. And Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, struck the water, and it was divided this way and that. So the two of them crossed over on what, family? Stay with me because this is getting good. So it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Acts, what should I do for you before I'm taken away from you? 
And the Lord said, please, let me have a what? Let me have a what? Of your spirit be upon me. So he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, Elisha, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it should not be what? Look how he tried to divide himself from a bunch. He said, mm, I ain't letting you go nowhere because I want to double. Somebody say, I want to double. Look at verse 11. Then it happened as they continue on and talk. It happened. That's a revelation right there. It happened as they continue on and what? That suddenly. Somebody say suddenly. That's how God moved. God's a suddenly God. Suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated two of them. And Elijah went up in the whirlwind to heaven. And Elijah saw it, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and his horses. So he saw him what, family? He saw him what? He took hold of, of his own clothes and tore them into pieces. He also took the mantle, the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and did what, family? He went back. Watch what happened. And he stood by the, the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the man of Elijah that had fallen from him. He struck the water and said, where is the God? Where is the Lord God of who? Where is the Lord God of who? And when he had struck the water, it was divided this way and that. And Elijah crossed over. Look at verse 15. Now when the son, the 50 sons of the prophet who were from Jericho saw him, they said, what they say? The spirit of what? The spirit of what? Rest on who? And they came to meet him, and they bowed, they bowed to the ground before him. Everybody look at me. They said, what was on Elisha is on him now. Why? Because he took that mantle that has fallen from him. A mantle ain't nothing but a coat. He took that mantle and went back and said, where is the God of Elisha? The Bible says he hit it. Bang. That water came over. Watch this here. Everybody doing this here. Looking at this here. They said, what's on Elisha is on him now. Yeah. Why? Because he'd been walking with it. Now they saw him go from phase one to phase four. And how, watch the family. And they came and bowed down to him. See, let me tell you something, family. There's a transfer coming. But the transfer only come if you don't make the separation. See, that's what Paul said. He said, the same God. He said, if you do what I, have, I taught you, what you learned, <clears throat> what you learned, what you received from me, the same God will be with you. See, and the Bible said, watch, watch this here, family. Now Elijah, he didn't know. But then all of a sudden, in, in verse 4, he simply went because of what he knew. And he did twice as much as his mentor did. You're supposed to do twice as much as your mentor did, family. Why? You asking for a double portion because you're standing on his shoulders. Let's grow, family. Let's grow. Let's grow through the seasons, the, the, the four seasons of growth. Don't, don't stay at stage one. Move on. God got something for you. Somebody need for you to make it. Somebody need for you to do the right thing. Because if you don't make it, they won't make it. Close your Bible. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you this true story. Stay with me, Streaming Live. Just a true story, Jane. It's a sad story. I don't like telling it, but it's the truth. It's a sad story, but it's the truth. Somebody say years ago. Years ago, I didn't know. I didn't know. I always had influence on my life, but no. I ain't never been a follower. I didn't know it was the hand of God on my life, James. And I used to have guys in the hood that would follow me. What I did, Katrina, they would do. And I got a lot of folks to do bad things, drugs, sell drugs. I didn't know. And I saw a, a couple of good people ruined because they was following me. See, and today I don't have no condemnation because I'm free. But then I got a whole lot of good people following me because I'm doing the right thing now. Are you with me? See, I've been on both sides. I saw people follow me, Carol. My wife can tell you. Rod, right, they follow me because the influence that I had not knowing that God will use the influence for the church one day. Like, ain't no different to Paul, Saul, Paul, same person. 
Paul was a Christian killer, hunting Christian down to kill him. And all, all of a sudden, he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Changed his life, the greatest apostle to ever live. God changed my life. See, he gave me influence. And I said, Terry, use your influence for me because I gave it to you. Are you with me? Use your influence for me. Amen. 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 And you grow from one to four. And the reason I gave you the story is because I said, folks depending on you. Now I got folks coming to me and said, you're my mentor. I look up to you. I said, it's okay because I'm in a good place right now. Back in the day, I was like, don't follow me. The devil is alive. You're responsible for your own self. Don't, don't put, <laughs> come on, see. But now, but now, I know I'm folks, folks looking up to me. God has given me influence. And I know they're looking up to me. They, they listening to what I say, how I live my life, how I treat my wife, how I raise my kids. How I represent the kingdom of God. Because you can't do it. You got to hear it. You got to have a model. You got to have somebody like John watching me that you can watch. And say, that's what I want right there. So if I do crazy stuff, it'll disappoint the folks who's looking up to me. See, number one, that's why Joseph said, how can I do this great evil and sin against God? But I don't want my wife to be and my son and my daughter, and you, I, and the people watching me, I don't want them to have a bad report. Because I know it's bigger than me. Are you with me? And that's why I know it's important for me to continue to move on. It's important for you to continue to move on because somebody else's life is tied to you. So we, we, come on, family, we, this is what we say. You know, worry about yourself. I got my, uh-uh. If some other folks, if you go to the crack house, they're going to follow you right in the crack house. I saw it. I saw my brothers and my sisters were going right into the crack house. See, I ain't never been a follower. I watch what it's going to do to you. <laughs> How many of y'all like me in here? Jane, I said, I don't like that. <laughs> I saw them folks losing weight, losing everything, losing jobs, selling their body. Uh-uh, I'm going to miss that one. But, but a follower, he'll follow right in there. <laughs> like I got some folk following me. If I came in here just like the, um, uh, what's the church, uh, uh, not Catholic, Catholic too, they went to smoke, the Episcopal. If I came here with smoke, you know they come down the aisle with smoke? A lot of y'all are coming down with smoke. <laughs> we just following Pastor Terry. What did Paul say? Follow me. When I quit following Christ, you pray for me, and you keep following Christ. Give the Lord a hand, praise. Are you with me, family? Come on, let's go. Let's grow. Let's move on. God got something for us to do.